Hi everyone. This week I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different from normal. So this week I'm going to be talking about Egyptian mythology. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the god Horus and the, the myth about Horus and his battle, his war between Set. So let me just give you a little uh, summary of the story. So Osiris was the father of Horus. Set was the brother of Osiris, so the uncle of Horus. Set killed Osiris, and then Horus went to war against him. And they had this long drawn out battle, well, drawn out war with various different events involved. There are lots of details involved in this. But ultimately, Horus ends up becoming the ruler of a united northern and southern Egypt, because Egypt was fundamentally divided between uh, Lower Egypt, which was the north, and Upper Egypt, which was the south. So Horus ended up becoming the ruler of a united Egypt. That's the basic story. Now, I think that this story had a historical origin. I think that this myth is actually an allegorical account of a real event. Now, there's a, an artifact called the Nama Palette, which depicts the first king of the first dynasty of Egypt, called King Nama, unifying Egypt through military conquests. It depicts him with the crown of Upper Egypt and the crown of Lower Egypt, showing him conquering both halves. So he is considered to be the one who unified northern and, lo and southern Egypt. So that clearly has obvious similarities to the story of Horus. However, there, there's a problem which makes this a little bit more complicated. You see, as well as the story of Horus, there's also a legend of a ruler called Menes. Now, Menes is, in, in Egyptian legend, placed as the first king, the one who united Upper and Lower Egypt. So that makes it a little bit complicated. Was Nama the historical figure behind the stories of Horus? Or was he the historical figure behind the stories of Menes? Well, the vast majority of researchers consider him to uh, be more likely the historical figure behind Menes. However, th there are some scholars who think that actually Menes was probably based on Nama's successor, a person called Horaha. So what's the, the real explanation? Well, I think that the key to this conundrum is revealed by the fact that Egyptian records which mention Menes specify that he received the throne from Horus. So that indicates he, he succeeded Horus. So that means you have a situation, that this peculiar situation where you've got one ruler, Horus, who unifies Egypt, but then you've got his successor, who is also remembered for having unified Egypt. So that's quite a peculiar situation where you've got one ruler and his successor both remembered for having unified Egypt. So how does that tie in with the historical facts about Nama? Well, Nama, of course, has his Nama palette, which depicts him unifying Egypt through military conquests. Now, interestingly, his successor, Horaha, there's a, an inscription which shows him performing a ceremony called Receiving the North and the South. Now, this is understood by many people to be a, uh, a unification ceremony, and that makes sense. Receiving the North and the South, this seems to be a unification ceremony. So, while Nama appears to have unified the country militarily, he conquered both halves of it, but it seems that it was his successor who, in a ceremonial sense, unified the north and the south, the upper and lower Egypt. So for that reason, actually, many people consider Menes to more likely be Horaha rather than Nama. That's why there's this debate, because they can both, in a sense, be said to have unified Egypt. However, what it seems to, to have been missed by most people, is that Menes was said to have received the throne from Horus, indicating that he was his successor. So that being the case, we actually have a situation where, like I said earlier, 
the one ruler and his successor both unified Egypt. So as far as I'm concerned, that seems to quite clearly clear up the case as to who was Menes and who was Horus for that matter, but which seems to be not really of any real interest to most people. So if, if Nama was Horus, then that would explain why in, in the legend, in an Egyptian legend, you have a situation where Horus unifies Egypt and his successor Menes is also known to have unified Egypt as well. If Nama was Horus, then he's the one who unified Egypt in a military sense, in, in a sense of having conquered both halves. But his successor, Horaha, unified Egypt ceremonially. So I believe that Nama was Horus and his successor, Horaha, was Menes. Now that would explain the legend. That would explain this peculiar set of circumstances where you've got two rulers both having been said to have unified Egypt one after the other. So, in my opinion then, Nama was the historical figure behind the legend of Horus. So, so that's not to say, just to be clear, that, that's not to say necessarily that the Egyptians did not worship a god who perhaps they called Horus and represented as a, as a falcon before Nama. They probably did, and, and there are some indications that they did. But I think that Nama... Well, all the kings of Egypt were considered to be the living incarnation of Horus. So I think that Nama, because of his incredibly important status as the early king who unified Egypt militarily, I think he became known as kind of like the definitive Horus early in Egyptian history. A little bit, a little bit like how Caesar, among the Roman emperors, if someone mentions Caesar, then you generally think of Julius Caesar, even though Caesar was actually a title used by, by all the Roman emperors subsequent to Julius Caesar. But because Julius Caesar had such a, a founding role, an important role in Roman history, when someone just mentions Caesar, Julius Caesar is the one you think of. He's like the definitive Caesar. So in a, in a kind of similar way, though not exactly the same, but in a similar way, I think that Nama became known as the definitive Horus because of his prominence and importance in early Egyptian history. So I think the stories, the myths around Horus are actually based on the life of, of Nama, even though Horus as a god may well have been worshipped in an, in an abstract sense before Nama was born. But nonetheless, the stories about him, I think, come from Nama. And therefore, the, actually, the characters around Horus, like his family members, I think are actually based on the family members of, of Nama. Though that's something which I'll go into more detail in another video, because that's a very complicated subject. But fundamentally, right now, Nama, I believe, was the historical figure behind Horus. And so the legend, the story, the myth of Horus unifying Egypt, I think, is actually... The historical event depicted on the Nama palette and uh, something that indicates that is the fact that Horus is actually shown assisting the events of the unification of Egypt or of Nama's conquest on the Nama palette showing that even back then there was this connection with Nama's activities and Horus's activities so that's all for this week see you next time